Good afternoon and welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Angelica Spanos. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. All right, so that is the start of Kellen Winslow's the second plea, which we are going to continue to recap and play for you here right now. Uh, with me to break this all down, criminal defense attorney David Shapiro. David, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, so this deal uh, was a little unexpected here. What was your reaction when you saw this or heard about it? Well, what's interesting about it is yesterday when I was watching part of the trial and I heard there was going to be this long break from around 11 a.m. to about 1.30 or so, I was texting with some friends of mine who had been following the trial as well, fellow criminal defense lawyers, and we were sort of joking, literally joking, oh, he's going to take a deal. Uh, that's how unrealistic we thought it was going to be this late in the game. Uh, not that it's necessarily so uncommon for these types of cases, but uncommon with this defendant given the fact that this was about to be the second retrial. Right, and it happened really at the last minute, if you think about it, because the jury was ready. We thought we were about to hear opening statements, and then we get the deal. Yeah, it was it was unique in the sense that, you know, a lot of times these cases, if they are going to resolve last minute, sort of resolve after the jury's picked, not necessarily, you know, moments before or seconds before opening statements. Uh, you know, if that were the case, sometimes you would expect to see something like this maybe Friday or, or earlier in the day on Monday, not necessarily literally the last minute before opening statements. So that part was pretty unique as well. Right. All right. Very interesting. Thanks, David. We're going to go on and listen to the rest of the plea here. The judge asked Winslow if he agreed to the terms of the deal. Let's listen. Okay, so this deal could result in up to 18 years in prison, and this is instead of the possible life sentence that he could have been facing. While he was answering the judge's questions, we did notice some hesitation in his voice when he spoke. He sort of waited a bit uh, while he was talking to the judge here. Um, David, did you find that weird or, or any, did you, did you have a comment about that? Well, I mean, whenever you're dealing with a defendant who's facing this much time, in prison, significant time in prison. It's not uncommon to have some hesitation when going through the recitation of the plea agreement. Uh, I think in this instance, though, is pretty unique because this is a case that's been going on for well over a year. It's a conversation that Winslow likely has had with his attorneys, past and present, uh, for the better part of that year. Is there a certain number that he would take? So, you know, the fact that he struggled with it was a little bit surprising, but overall, it's not, it's not necessarily too uncommon for what we usually see. Yeah, and, and is this a difficult decision for the defense to make and to say, hey, let's do, let's plead guilty rather than having this retrial again? Well, as it relates to the criminal case alone, it was a pretty easy decision, or at least it should have been for Winslow. Because remember, the first trial, one of those, I think it was Jane Doe number four, they were two jurors away from being convicted of a forcible rape or rape of an unconscious person on Jane Doe number four. If he was convicted of Jane Doe four and Jane Doe two, he would have had to have served at least 15 to life. So he was dangerously close to a lifetime sentence anyway. So the fact that, you know, he agreed to do 12 to 18 and it's ultimately gonna be up to the judge when he was gonna get eight or nine years in all likelihood based on what he was convicted of on the first case, you know, that was the easy decision. The complicated decision here is as it relates to California's sexually violent predator law, because now he's been convicted by jury and by his own admission of five separate victims, three of which being forcible felony sexual assaults. So the concern is, is that when he gets out, when he serves his prison sentence, he runs the risk of being civilly committed, possibly, and having to go through those trials as well. Right, and you talk about the difficulties as well as why maybe it wasn't a hard decision for the defense. but. If you had to sum it up, is this a good deal for him? Without question, whenever you're looking or whenever you represent an individual or whenever you're looking as a criminal defendant of multiple ways you could serve the rest of your natural life in prison and you're able to get a determinate sentence, in reality, this sentence, if he gets 12 years, it may only be three years more than what his maximum would have been after what he was convicted on the first trial. So, you know, when I looked at this, I was thinking that it was probably going to fall somewhere in the 20s if the case was going to be able to resolve at all. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised and, and kudos to his defense team to be able to get that range. You know, they were able to use what they had and use the, the unwillingness of a lot of these victims to come back in and testify again uh, to resolve the case in the best interest of their client. I just hope it doesn't result in an SVP commitment later on on behalf of the defense because, you know, then what did he really do this for if he's going to go from California Department of Corrections prison into some sort of indefinite civil commitment? 
Right. All right, David Shapiro, thank you so much. We're going to continue to talk and recap this plea after the break. Also, we have a guest joining us, Alita Wan. She is going to be uh, joining us on the show. She's a journalist that wrote a book about Kellen Winslow II and also is an attorney herself. So we will continue to break down and recap his plea after this.